chilling in her crib you yeah, be at home yeah. and you're at home because you're family and we mm-hmm. love you we love you because god loves us and he put that love of his in our hearts and Amen. we hope that it's shining you know as, as a result of the things that we're doing we hope you feel like you're part of the family that's right because we're at home and we're just like chillaxing is that what they say chilling i said chillaxing i just said that one i think people other people do it too but chilling mm-hmm. chillaxing we be chillaxing relaxing you know at your back Okay, <laughs> yeah, we, we do that. And uh, I'm your host, Gospel Recording Artist Appointed, and this is my co-host, The Advocate. Hello, guys. What up? Come on, family. What you got to say about that? Okay, you know, we're among, like, when we do this show, our family is usually here. Sometimes we do this show, like, really late, late, late. Mm-hmm. And and people be asleep, mm-hmm. friends be chicken, asleep, mm-hmm. family be, be asleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All sleeping. So we don't have them, but we do have a... A fam representation mm-hmm. today. So yeah, what up, family? What you guys got to say? <laughs> okay, you know, <laughs> okay. Okay, he didn't say anything. Okay, he didn't he say anything. Like, but he he was recognized. I mean, he was. See, he, if you knew him, though, you knew you would know he wasn't. His mo was to be silent. He was just representing right there. He was just, he was just representing right there. Yes, he was. Praise the Lord. Him and his golf so, clap. Yeah. We've got a great show ahead, and we're so happy to be able to share it with you. But before we share it with you, some of you who've been watching us and listening to us, you know that before we get into the show, we are going to get into that blue thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that blue, not that blue thing, but that, that blue thing, thing. But that blue thing. Okay, yeah, the blue thing. We're, we're going to get into some prayer. Mm-hmm. So please join us as we have some time of prayer. Father, we thank you for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for yes, your love. Lord. We thank you, Father, for being there for us, even when we're not there, Lord. You're still there for us, Lord. So we thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. And we praise you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to share you through the videos, through the music, Lord, through the idle chit-chat, Lord, through all the things that we're doing, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to fellowship, Lord. So we ask you, Father, please, that you would lead and guide, Lord, and that we would commune with you, Lord, and we all say that it was good for us to be again with you, Lord. We praise you and we thank you and believe this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Woo-hoo, come on now. Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Uh, some things we got to have. Prayer party. Yep, we got to have that. Got to have that prayer party. Yeah, amen, because, amen. You know, prayer is like an awesome, awesome privilege of believers mm-hmm. to be able to pray. And we don't even have to, like, be in a certain position to pray. You know what I'm saying? Like, we mm-hmm. don't have to kneel. We don't, yeah, we don't have to be formal about it. We don't even have to be like, you know, it doesn't even have to be audible because God hears the uh, prayers of our hearts. So I'm just thankful for prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, Lord, for prayer. Yeah. Woohoo. I got to go to my prayer party again. Prayer party. Mm-hmm. Yep. Where are my people at? Where are my support at? Prayer party. There you go. Oh, we will answer that crowd. <laughs> you know, I was thinking. I was thinking that we'll make that party pop, man. Mm -hmm. What you guys won't do, editing will. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Push that clap button. Yeah, it's the. It's not. I don't think it's a clap button. They have one for a pod, don't they? Yeah, I don't think we use a button. I think we just go like use some what they call uh, samples. No, we use yeah, drag and drop. Yeah, (laughs) drag and drop. Drag and drop is as opposed to stop, roll, and drop. Okay, which is what you stop, drop, and roll. Are you serious? You said stop, roll, and drop. What's the difference? I mean, it's like, oh, and I'm no, no, don't, 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 don't even go there. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, Chris. Okay, okay, okay. I just want everybody to know. No, what did I say you, again? Okay, you tell me. Said what did stop, I say roll, and drop. Okay, if you stop, do it, a point it's where you will die. Stop, roll, and drop. What? Stop, roll. Stop, drop, and roll. Okay, stop, roll, and drop. Okay, that's out of sequence. Yeah, if okay. you roll in the air, you're still on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You didn't have to point it out. Okay, I'm ready to move to the next segment now. That drop, though. I'm ready to stop talking about it. Yeah, you can, you want to get your humor in. Okay, go on, get your laughs in. <laughs> you see okay. it roll in the sky, that drop will be inevitable. <laughs> okay, you need to, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a smirk out of Chris. <laughs> oh, that's just really cracking him up. Wow. And this producer's got a big old cheesy grin. And okay, whatever. All right, I'm going to move to the next segment. Wait. What, you want to talk about it some more? <laughs> Not that. 
I found out though when you get a speeding ticket on base, you don't take care of it the same place <laughs> that you would for one like in a city. Even though if you were to be pulled over by a military cop or a regular cop, they both have the information. To me, that's just a hassle. Okay, we do say that this show is about random talk, and you just went randomly on in a whole other direction. Well, and I see our producer there, our dear sweet producer, telling us that it's time for us to move on. She is our stopwatch clock. I hope I did that right. You should see the little fuse that goes okay. off when she's... Uh -oh. I don't... I, no, no, no. I'm not going to do it. You still don't no, have no, a no, watch. No, 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 no. I'm moving on, like she said. Okay. okay. I am going to be obedient. I'm moving on, and I, I'm going to introduce the first segment, or you can introduce it, but it must be introduced, like, now. So you want to do it? If you want to do it, do it. Seize Around the World. Seize Around the World. What's that about? Seize Around the World. Seize Around the World is a segment where you get to take a little peek into what other Christians are doing around the world Wonderful. or maybe even near you. Wonderful segment. Sorry for stepping over that him, okay, because sometimes he steps over me. He doesn't apologize, but I'm good. I can apologize because I'm humble like that. So I apologize for stepping over you. I don't realize when it happens. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, please, roll that beautiful footage. We're going to enjoy this time with seas around the world. Praise God. judge has ruled against a Christian bakery that refused to make a cake with the slogan, support gay marriage. The owners say they're happy to bake a cake for anyone, but reserve the right to decline certain messages. The ruling suggests that all business owners um, will have to be willing to promote any cause or campaign, no matter how much they disagree with it. Or, as the Equality Commission has suggested, they should perhaps just close down. Um, and that can't be right. The Equality Commission of Northern Ireland launched a civil action against the bakery, claiming its actions violated equality laws. The family that owns the bakery says it is considering an appeal and is grateful for support from Christians. This is a wow moment for me. Amen. Because it's like... Not only are bakers, it's like bakers are being targeted or something because mm -hmm. even bakers here in the United States have had some issues because they've oh, refused yeah. to do certain things, you know, like, um, well, certain things being that they don't want to promote, you know, homosexuality. Uh, homosexuality, right? They don't want to do that. So because they don't want to do that, they face fines and, you know, harassment and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And so it's just, oh, yeah, and then people get on the Internet, and then they go to that Yelp page. and Yeah, start and they were harassing yeah, them. Yeah, posting a bunch of ugly stuff, and we find out it's just not happening in the United States of America, but, uh, but even in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what it is about bakers. I was just, when I was sitting there, I was like, what is it with the bakers? Like, why go challenge the bakers? Mm, you it's know? probably because of the whole wedding cake type thing. Well, I thought what they said was pretty cool. That That's a good take because they're like, we're willing to bake anybody a cake. It's the message. Mm -hmm. We'll bake you a cake, but what, what message that you put on there? We're not willing just to conform. Promote any message that yeah, you want us to send. I think that's right. I think you shouldn't have to, like, if you don't believe in something. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to do it just because somebody's paying you. You shouldn't too. have to go against your own values. Especially you if know. you don't want to take their money. Yeah, you'll bake the cake and somebody can go put their own stuff on there somewhere else. They don't have to force you to do it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty interesting. And I noticed that they said that fellow Christians um, are standing with them from around the world. Around the world, which is pretty interesting to me because we report about seas that are around the world. Mm -hmm. So they're saying around the world, Cree, Christian Crees, <laughs> whatever. Just you don't mind laughing at me. Christians around the world are supporting other Christians who are living out their values, living out their faith. Amen. And we know that God's assured us that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. So I'm pretty sure he's got them. Amen. Amen. Whether they have to close the bakery up or not, God's got them. God's mm -hmm. going to work it out for their good. And we'll be standing in prayer with those Christians as well as other Christians. Start to fund it for them. All around the world. Well, go fund it. Those people will shut you down. That's another really? thing. Oh, yeah. If it, they, uh, they, uh, one Christian organization or, or one GoFundMe thing that was for Christians, they shut that down. They're like, nope, we're not doing it. They cited some sort of rule, but they did it. But it's uh, all good. But I'm just thankful. What about you? I'm thankful to God that God is for us and not against us. Amen. And if God is for us, who, who can really be? can be against Amen. us, right? Somebody better clap up in here. Yeah. Who can be really against us when God is for us? So, you know, it's like they can come at you one way, but when God gets at them, they'll leave like seven different ways. That's biblical. Like mm. they came in one way and like seven ways they're leaving, leaving against, I mean, leaving out, running away from you. So praise God for, for taking care of us like that. And we're just going to just chat along and just get on, roll it in, Mosey transition in. in. Yep. Tra that's my transition. You know, you know, you guys have seen the party thing. This is the transition wings. You know, these are my wings and I'm transitioning 
Winging it, yeah. And he's doing it too. See how we work as a team? Teamwork. Praise God. What? Partnership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Say what? 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 Yeah. Anyway, we're going to move on, right? Mm -hmm. We saw that segment. And I think I, since she's not putting her finger up and telling us it's time and stuff, I, I mean, like, it's not a vulgar finger. It's just a finger telling us <laughs> about the time. All right. So, anyway, you guys, <laughs> it really isn't, you know, because I was just thinking and somebody might think something, you know. Some unsafe person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now she's doing it. Now she's doing it. Oh, she's like, you yeah. got to get it moving. Yeah, I was going to try to get into some more random chit-chat. Remember that appointment on Showtime on Apollo? Oh, yeah, yeah. The guy, Snowman or something. Mm -hmm. Get out. Yeah. Do tap, tap, tap. Yeah, get on out the stage and stuff. That was kind of mean, but okay. I always thought he'd be funny. I thought it was. Yeah. I thought he was just weird. I thought it, that was really one of the only reasons I watched the show was I'm to sorry. see the, the man tap like, dance people off the stage. I'm like, where did they get that man from, like out of a horror movie or something? Because he was scary looking to me. But, okay, she said move on. So we're going to move on and get to the next thing. And uh, the next thing is, is that we're going to be doing a little laughing. Okay? Mm -hmm. A little laughing. A little laugh in. You know what I said? A I laugh little. in. I called it Finn. Laugh in. I didn't even go laughing. Fish, okay, I, I changed it. Finn, right? Laugh in. Laugh in. We're going to be doing a little laughing, right? <laughs> 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 it's funny to me. It's funny to me when you, when you, when you say it back, right? Laugh in. Laugh in. I didn't even. Sounds uh -oh. like I'm speaking another language. Yeah. I just, laugh in. I got a little terrified there. I saw it. I looked down over a certain <laughs> person <laughs> and I got a little. Oh. Oh. Wow. Keep it moving. Then she just threatened to break my knees. I'm just playing. Okay, if you want us to keep it moving, you can't. Our show is exciting. You can't be over there with mm -hmm. a full blown yawn. Come on now. Well, never mind. Yeah, where's the <laughs> energy, man? We got our energy. What about you over there? Now oh, she's man, I made the face. Oh, no. Now she's rubbing Edit her that. Eye. Edit that. I made a face. Edit it's okay. Th we'll just that. make it blurry. Real yeah, quick. make it blurry when you do the editing so that people can't see that face. Mm -hmm. just make what it happened? No, I'm not sure how it came out. did that on purpose. Out. Nothing yeah. happened. Yeah, that's true. So we got to do a little laughing, mm -hmm. right? So coming up, laugh a little. And we're just asking you, friend over there, please roll that beautiful footage so that we can laugh a little. LAL, it's time. I'm at the mall and this, this dude has on a shirt that said, if you don't speak English, leave the country. But it's written in English. <laughs> so I walked up to him and I said, you're dumb. <laughs> but I said it in Spanish. So. Then when you're at the mall, you always see the girls. The girls be wearing the skinny jeans. You see the girls in the skinny jeans. Skinny jeans. Read the instructions. You know? Um. Yeah. Supposed to be skinny to wear these jeans. Yeah, that's going to help out. <laughs> They're not called muffin top jeans. That's not what they are. They're not. You ever be at the mall, you see the dude with the white tank top shirt on, like a muscle shirt, right? I mean, he don't got no muscles. <laughs> You're like, what is that, a wife threatener? <laughs> well, now, um, for those who didn't understand the last joke, tank tops, a, a nickname for them are uh, wife beaters, because when you watch cops... <laughs> Dude, always in the domestic violence, always wearing a wife beater or, or tank top. Okay, so what's a tank top? What does that look like? It's the, um, they come in different colors, white, black. They, you know, sometimes they are graphic, okay. but the sleeves are missing. Yeah. The undershirts, you know. Yeah, and that's why they call them, like, tank tops, right? And that's but why it was, like, They're also known as wife beaters. <laughs> I'm going to start calling them wife threaters. <laughs> because he's <laughs> making fun of people who don't have any muscles <laughs> and calling them wife threaters. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty funny. That was pretty clever, mm -hmm. right? It was pretty funny. I usually try to find the ones that, you know, you know, have some sort of religious thing in it or something about church or something. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we'll use these as well, as long as it's positive and as long as we can get a positive laugh, right? Mm -hmm. It's cool. So we thank uh, the Lord for allowing us to find that video. Amen. We Amen. thank Michael Jr. Michael Jr. And, and CBN News from our last segment. Man, we are thinking so, like, on the same uh, same uh, accord because I was going to do that, too. I was going to 
plug the other thing. Ah, yeah, see. but you beat me to it. But it's all cool because there's really no competition. Because nope. if there were, I would win. You <laughs> would. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've not I heard the win. title of the show. It's at home with a point. Yeah, that's only the title of the show. I wouldn't win the competition. <laughs> I'm just making this stuff. I'm trying to sound all confident like that. I'm just kidding. Those are really jokes. Hopefully you laugh because that's what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to make you laugh, not make you think how arrogant I am. Amen. Praise I'm God. sorry. If it was my show, I'd be like, you lose. <laughs> even if I'm losing, you lose. No, no. You wouldn't even be like that. That's just, oh, if it's my show, I have to win every time. Oh, maybe he's serious because I tried to just, every time. I tried to give him a disclaimer, but he's like, I'm, a, I'm no, sticking I'm, with I'm me. I'm just playing. Oh, he's kidding. See? Just when I gave up, he, he gave but in. I don't lose often. Okay. Soft uh, brag well, or humble brag. Yeah, humble brag, humble brag, humble brag. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. I was going to ask you before she told me to hurry up, like, you got anything for us? Anything? Oh, uh, just the, um, the random thing about the, the, the paying a traffic ticket. Oh, that was it? Mm -hmm. Okay, Because well. I had to pay one, and I went to the normal building that you would go to pay a traffic ticket, and they were like, no, you got to go to the one that's for the base. And I was like, hmm. everything else is connected. Why are you separating this one method? Hmm. They made everything easy for them and difficult for me. Hmm. And when I got there, they didn't they didn't have a sign that said no cell phones or anything like that. Hmm. So I walk in with my cell phone, and then they told me to go put it back in the car. And I had to walk like two blocks to get back to my car because I had to block, park two blocks away because they're downtown. Hmm. Well, I'll give a little short story. I met a lady today that was pretty impressive. Um, she was like. Like, she's on this quest, like, to get closer and closer to God. Mm -hmm. And when I told her we would, like, have in church and stuff, you know, like, sometimes we meet at home and sometimes mm -hmm. we meet at the Holiday Inn. When I told her that, she was like, she wants it in, you know, because she says she's just trying to soak in as much as possible. And I truly believe that that's instructive for the rest of us, you know. It is. That we need to suck in as much as possible of the Lord as we possibly can just to be in his presence, you know. And she was talking about, like, true worship, and she was talking about, you know, prayer and from prayer, getting into this place of true worship and true communion, and you know, just moving from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Amen. And I was like, "Yeah, let's let's exchange information." So we did. So hopefully, we'll see her around, you know. Sure. And um, you know, we'll all like, you know, get something from one another. Praise God. Amen. We'll pick up a little something, something, and share a little something, something with each other. But that was pretty cool. Meeting someone whose desire is to be filled. Amen. Who wants to live for God's glory. And which is the way that, you know. It's supposed to be because, supposed to be. you know, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And, you know, it's like we're here for his glory and to enjoy him. Amen. Right? To glorify him. Isn't that great news? I wish I had a witness up in here. Isn't that it's great okay. news? You it's know, okay. You know, it's like, let me, let me say it one more time, though. I want to say it one more time. Our purpose is to, you know, to bring glory to God's name and to enjoy, did you hear that? Enjoy. enjoy him, not begrudge him and, you know, figure things out. Amen. Drudgery, but to actually really and truly enjoy God. Amen. And, oh, how I desire that. Praise God for all of us. Amen. Amen. That's an experience that we all ought to have, that we live to bring in glory and to enjoy him. Amen. Come on now, like we enjoy a good what? A good what? Movie or a meal. A good movie or a meal. Good. I like the M's. Amen. A good movie or a meal. Enjoy God like that. So I think, you know, my little story is a good lead-in to mm -hmm. what's up next. Yes, it is, because you know what's up next? Why don't you tell us about that? Word wow. Word wow. And this is the part of the show where, you know, you get to sit back and listen to some word for a while. For a while. Praise God. The word of God for a while. Oh, my, my, my. We can't get by without it. Amen. Please, roll that beautiful footage. Jesus, when he gave his first parable in the Gospel of Mark, do you remember it? It's the parable of the soils. They told that story of the farmer throwing seeds out to different soils. And then when his disciples asked him to explain it, he says, the seed is the word of God. And what's interesting about it is the given in that story is the word will go out. The word of God will be proclaimed. It will be heard. It will be interacted with. The only thing that will make a difference between it being fruitful in your life or not is the preparedness of the soil. And some of us, if we're honest, we have maybe spent every morning this year getting up, reading our Bible, but not saying what's going on in my heart, not preparing the soil of God. What's happening in me? Am I discontent about this frustration in my life? Am I disappointed in you that I haven't achieved this yet? And we don't attend to that. We just sort of read the Bible, say, I did my devotional moment and walk off. And we're like somebody that takes seed and just throws it out on your driveway and then wonders why crops aren't growing. And some of you, maybe the most Christian thing you'll do this week is not read another book yet. 
but it's to sit down and just assess the soil of your heart and say, God, I can keep loading into my mind all these wonderful thoughts, but if deep in my heart I feel a resentment for you because I haven't arrived at the place I wanted, I feel a deep fear because I'm not sure you're going to come through for me. I've got to plow that up. I've got to set that out before him and let him address the soil. That's what David does. That's what we're meant to do. And here with David, as you watch the bottom fall out of his life, we get a window into his intimate conversations with God. And we hear how David interacts with God in the lowest moment of his life. And as we watch him do it, he gives us a window into what authentic devotion to God looks like. And the first thing you see in Psalm 142, he says, with my voice, I cry out to the Lord. With my voice, I plead for mercy. I pour out my complaint. I tell my trouble to him. Do you see what's happening? As he begins, he says to God, I'm pouring out my complaint. I'm telling all my trouble to you. The first thing David does, and I think the first critical element to a devotional life, is we get honest with God. It's an honest heart that David pours out what's going on in him with unfettered access. And yet what's interesting about David is David doesn't stop there. And some of us don't like the idea of being really deeply honest with God because you know people that just cry about their problems and that's all they do and you don't want to be that person. But that's not David. He gets honest, but that's the beginning. It's not the end. And you see, as soon as David gets honest, he adds the second piece that's essential. Then he gets perspectives. He doesn't stop at the emotions, but he doesn't neglect them. David has an open heart and then David has an attentive mind. He pours out his complaint, but before the poems are over, he begins to speak truth to himself. He ends Psalm 142 saying, bring me out of prison. And then he says, the righteous will surround me. You will deal bountifully with me. He begins to preach the words of God into the place where he needs to hear it. His soul in the midst of its distress. And that's what we're meant to do. I get honest and I get perspective. And then I begin to load my mind with thoughts of God so that they might stir my affections for God. Because what you think about what you care about, what you care about, you chase. Amen. 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 What a message. You know, he says it's what we are passionate about is what we chase. Mm -hmm. And I I dare say that there's so many of us in the body of Christ that are just, I mean, straight up, we're just lukewarm. Amen. We're just lukewarm. We're not hot and we're not cold. And we don't have this, you know, this fervency in us, you know, this, this, this hotness about Fire. us. Yeah, we're just like kind of complacent and like a daisy, you know. We're not out there like we should be. And I don't mean out on the streets. I'm talking about out there in our hearts the way that we ought to be for God. But I love the message today. I love today's message. And then I like the part where he was like, you've got to come out of the emotional part you mm-hmm. know, and pursue it. You mm-hmm. can't just sit there and, oh, I messed up. What well, was me? You know, that's, that's not what it's about. Yes, you messed up, but it's what you do after you've messed up. You know, the, 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 the bounce back, the comeback. Right, the resiliency. About. And, you know, it's, you know, he was also, you know, it's not, not just when you mess up too, but it's like when you're in distress, like mm-hmm. when you're in, mess, in a mess, right? David poured out his complaint before God. When you're like, Lord, you know, uh, I'm going through my Job period. I'm in my valley, and this is hurting me. And David poured it out. And then he said after David poured it, David gained perspective. Amen. And once he had the right perspective, David was able to encourage himself. And that reminds me of a story. You guys got to find the story about how David encouraged himself. I am not. I don't know exactly where it is. I could tell somebody to get it, but I don't want you. I want you to find the story. Amen. Praise God. I want you to find the story where David, after losing everything, after the, um, the Philistines came along and took all of his stuff, his, his wives and his children and all that, and all the men and everybody was mad at David. David had to encourage himself in the Lord. And sometimes we have to do the exact same thing. I thank God, and I hope there's somebody here with me. I thank God that God has instilled in us the ability to encourage ourselves in him. Amen. When mother and father forsake us, God takes us up. And he takes us up in such a way that we're able, come on, amen, amen we're able to encourage ourselves. Amen. Amen. He's the only help I know. What about you? Same here. And it's really, it's really profound that, you know, that video was picked because this week I went through something that was along the lines of this video. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going through something I've been praying for a while, you know, that a certain thing would happen. Amen. And it didn't happen. Amen. I was like all the prayer, all the prayer, all the prayer that I did. Amen. And then later on that day. I found out that it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, that 
there was a plan in place that God did hear my cries. Mm -hmm. It's just what I wanted isn't what I needed. Mm -hmm. Come on, I now. got what I needed, not what I wanted. Amen. I, you know, that video was very encouraging. Amen. What we need, not what we want. And I'm, I mean, you aren't, I'm just thankful that he doesn't leave it in our hands. Because if he left it in our hands, I guarantee you, we we'd mess it up. up. We'd mess it up. We'd, cause we're fallible and frail and, and fickled. I like those F words. You know, we're frail and, and we're fickled. So I thank God that he doesn't leave it up to us, you Amen. know, us finite folk who don't know enough to make decisions. Awesome. One more time. Let's give it up to God for the message today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, we so hope that someone or many someones were encouraged Amen. by that and everything else that we've been doing because that's why we're doing it. Amen. We're doing it to bring glory to his name and we're doing it so that people who hear, even ourselves, we're edified. Amen. You know, doing some editing. You know, maybe we may need to put a verb in or, you know, take out an adjective or something like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're Amen. like sentences that God is editing. Amen. Through his word. So I thank God for that. And we're just going to keep it moving, right? Yes, That's what are. we do. We keep it moving. Like what, what? Motor. Yeah, we keep it moving. Word, wow. Maybe we should move word, wow, up. No? Like, uh, towards the end. The like in the beginning. No? Mm, I, think it's, I think it's good to... to what about in the on, middle? On, uh, well, I mean, we have word, wow. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we should do a plug-in party before word, wow, so that we could end on the word, wow note. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, either. I don't know. Lord, lead us and guide us. Isn't that Amen. great? We can just say that just like that. What well, did I tell you about prayer in the beginning, right? Just like mm -hmm. that. We just prayed and asked God to lead us and guide us. And if you guys have an idea, hit us up, right? Yeah. Hit us up and let us know. Drop we'll be telling. We'll tell you in just a little bit how to hit us up. You are invited to the North Carolina Gospel Fest at Faith Assembly Christian Center, the new church near the campus of North Carolina Central University, bringing you the best in gospel music by Sapphire Entertainment. You have been officially invited. Amen. You know Amen. What we're about to do next? What are we about to do? Plug in party. Plug in party. Plug in it in. What? Er, er, right there. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are interested and want to know more about God or you have any questions you want to ask appointed about how she got to where she's at or Amen. something that you're going through in your own life, Amen. hit us up at, 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 at appointed dot, dot Moby, A-P-P-O-I-N-T-E-D dot M-O-B-I. Uh. Right. <laughs> I like that. You said, oh, that's right. Appointed dot Moby. Hit us up there. And you can also email us at appointed, A-P-P-O-I-N-T-E-N-D. You might have to rewind this to get that. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. At gmail.com. You can get us there, too. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon we're going to have some information on how you can find the applicant because it is at home with appointed with her co-host, the advocate. Mm -hmm. He just got to get social. He's not really social, but he's going to get there. But if you want to talk to to the uh, advocate, just hit him up through me until he gets his own space. I plug my space kind of. I thought that was what you were going for. <laughs> I was kind of going for that. You <laughs> that until he gets his face in the book. Whoa. For real. Until he gets his face in a book. Okay. Or I hear the tweets from the birds. Okay. Sweater. Maybe it comes down. He's a harsh critic. Chris <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like, it's cold. I mean, I thought it was, I mean, I, that was for the moment, right? These jokes aren't scripted, okay? This program isn't scripted. What you hear here is coming from, like, when in the I moment. When I Twitter, though, you can grow fear, man. I every day, Chris. Every day. <laughs> tweet him the thing, the joke, the same the joke. The that same he, joke yeah. that you put your thumbs down on. Yeah, Beach, I think he thumbs down both jokes. Mm -hmm. So give him both jokes. And I'm going to ask all the loyal followers of At Home with Appointed to join me and retweet it right back at you. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So, yeah, it's about that time after, you know, after all those threats against him. <laughs> all those Twitter threats. <laughs> yeah, those Twitter threats. Yeah, Twitter threats after those TTs. Okay, it's time for us to go BB, bye-bye. Come on now. We're going to get out of here. But we want to tell you that it's been so, so wonderful and such a marvelous privilege 
and honor to share with you our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through the various avenues and things that he allows us to do it through. Amen. She almost took a fall out. I don't know. What, I don't know. <laughs> wow. For some reason, when she fell, I was, something else popped up into my head. You, you mean when she almost fell? Mm-hmm. She took me right off the ending. Okay. For some reason, the food came to Okay, I got to try to get back. I was like, wow. I mean, it was a, it was a wow moment. I was like, whoa, what? I, and I was, it would have been even more wild if she fell and then you saw her head off the camera, like the screen. Then we have to play that. We would have to use that and slow it down so you see, like, the pain in her eyes. Well, I was literally paralyzed, okay, because I was like, I didn't know if she was going to fall. I know that you guys can't see this, but the producer got up and started walking across junk, and she almost fell down. She kind of swayed, and she was doing, like, the Matrix kind of thing where she leaned back. You know, she was doing all of that, and I was like, is she going to go down? <laughs> she didn't. Okay. All right. I'm sorry I laughed. <laughs> okay. I'm laughing because it was quite funny to me. Now, I mean, you notice I didn't laugh when I – people can see it. You know, people who see this on TV, you know that I was not smiling then. It was – you saw the look of shock. But now that I can reflect on it, okay, it's hilarious. Okay. It was totally funny. Oh, did you see it too? Okay, I saw it and it was funny. But anyway, we're going to get out of here. We love you, but Jesus loves you more. And as we like to say at the end of every show, Jesus Jesus be be a fit.